Hello, everybody. How you doing? My name's Curtis. I'm an addict and an alcoholic. Hey, hey, what's up? Uh, so I am the recovery pastor here at Community of Hope Church. And so um, I have the opportunity to speak on a regular basis here. I have the opportunity to help design some of the things that we are going through. Right now we're in the middle of a sermon series called Let Love Respond. Um, the idea with Let Love Respond is that we are about to be going through um, steps four and five. Uh, those are typically recognized as pretty difficult steps. Steps where we have to be fearless and searching with our moral inventory. Steps where we have to have the opportunity to speak all of the things that we just dug up out of ourself and share them with somebody else. And so we say let love respond, not because we just want to put some icing on a whole bunch of crap, but because we recognize that this is actually something that is very beneficial for people. That when we have the opportunity to let love respond, when we are being open, when we are being vulnerable with people through some of our most challenging times, that's actually when somebody can say that I actually see you. I know you. And I still love you. I accept you as you are. And I know for me, when that happened, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, I knew that my deepest, darkest secrets were actually things that have always repelled people from me. They've always caused people to be like, well, you know, that sounds nice for that person, but I'm, I'm glad that person accepts you. I'm going to be over here. Uh, I've lost relationships with women because I, I told them, like who I felt I was. They're like, hey, <laughs> I didn't really know that about you, so we'll see you later. Um, I know what rejection is when opening up to somebody, and I know that that is a fear that happens. But when we open up to people inside of recovery with intention, we don't have to be worried about being rejected. We have the opportunity to let love respond. We open ourselves up. We become vulnerable with other people. And then all of a sudden, rejection doesn't fill that void, love does. And that's the hope inside of this sermon series, is that you're going to recognize that you don't have to be afraid of your past. You don't, have to, you don't have to be afraid of going through your deepest, darkest secrets, things that would otherwise repel people from you. You don't have to be afraid to share that with people because they can respond in love. We are all here because we recognize that we have a hurt. We have a habit, we have a hang-up, we have addictions, we have compulsions that have drove us to come to a room like this. And so we don't ever have the opportunity to judge anybody else. And I think that e equal basis is really what gives us the opportunity to have love respond when we do become vulnerable with other people. We're not just going up to a person on the street and sharing our deepest, darkest secrets and expecting them to say, hey, man, I love you too. No, we're, <laughs> we're doing this with intention. We are thinking about the person that we're going to do this with. We're going through our moral inventory with guidance from a sponsor. And it's through these steps that we can recognize that love responds. And when love responds, it's not something that enables us to continue doing the things on the reasons that we have this whole moral inventory sheet in front of us. It doesn't enable us. In fact, it gives us strength so that we don't have to continue to do it because we get rid of it. And that's a, a paradox that I didn't really understand before. Before, I thought if I dwell, if I go to these recovery meetings and I just dwell on my past, you know, I'm never going to get over it. So I'm just going to let the past be in the past. Let that myth control my life because the past was in the past until it wasn't. And then it controlled my present. And so when I enter into these steps, steps four and five, it's not wanting to dwell on how I was and just wallowing in my sorrow. Instead, it's giving recognition to so that I can move on. And that's really why we're here tonight. That's why I have the opportunity tonight is to let you guys know that we have the opportunity to move on. We have the opportunity to move forward towards a goal that we have, which is the reasons that we come in these rooms. And so I want to take a look at James 5, 16. 
which is the theme verse of this series. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And then we'll look at step five, which is going to be the focus tonight. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. And seeing how these two um, play together is really, really awesome. Um, but before we get into all that, I want to read an excerpt out of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I, I just want everybody to know, I recognize that everybody in here is not an alcoholic. Everybody watching online is not an alcoholic. But the 12 steps of recovery were designed by the guys who wrote this book. And so I pay attention to what they have to say. And in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, it's into action. It says, we pocket our pride and go to it. It's after the step four, we're entering into step five. We pocket our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. Once we have taken the step, withholding nothing, we are delighted. We can look the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. <sighs> that sounds nice, right? <laughs> if that was a pie, cut me a slice. <laughs> that sounds good. I want that. Our fears fall from us. That sounds nice. We begin to feel the nearness of our creator. We may have had certain uh, spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have spiritual experience. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for tonight. Lord, thank you for the way that you've intervened and worked in my life. God, thank you for working in every person's life here and that's watching online. God, I ask that through this teaching that you be glorified, that recovery becomes real, and that we have legitimate steps that we have the opportunity to take so that we can move towards not the way our life has been or the way our life is, but the way that our life should be. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. All right, and so here's the deal. We're going to take a look at James 5.16 again. <laughs> and I know last time, it was a couple weeks ago, I had spoken a little bit. I had touched on this concept of paying attention to what the words of Scripture are. And it's not just like the cool quote that you can pull out of your pocket and say in front of somebody when they're going through a hard time and like, yep, God is awesome, we'll see you later. No, it's paying attention to the words that communicate what is inside the content of Scripture. And so it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And it's that therefore that I really want to pay attention to. A couple weeks ago, I, like I said, I touched on the subject. When you see therefore in Scripture, you want to ask, what is therefore, therefore? Right? What are, what are we actually looking at this for? Because what it actually illustrates is it shows that there was content prior to that word therefore. And this person is now saying, in light of everything I just said, we are going to move this way. In light of the things that I just talked about, I want you to do this. In light of the things that we are communicating to you, this is a way that you can respond. And so it says, therefore... What should we do? Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. And then we have the opportunity to ask why. So that. So that is the why question inside of Scripture. When you're looking at Scripture and you see a so that, you have the opportunity to underline it. Take a pause and see what is this person answering right now. Because the point of reading Scripture isn't to say that you can, I've read Scripture today. So if you have this plan in your Bible and you want to read through one chapter a book or, or one chapter a day or three chapters, whatever it ends up being, and you start to come across some of these cues, give yourself a break. The point isn't to get a checkbox in your app or to have a checkbox on your sheet of paper saying, hey, I read scripture today. No, study it. Take your time. If you don't finish all three chapters because you got to go to work, that's okay. You will have gotten so much out of Scripture that it will have been worth the pause. 
And so when you see so that, it's all of a sudden answering this question that you probably didn't know was being asked. Why should I, as it says, confess my sins to each other and pray? Why should I do that? It says, so that you may be healed. Well, that's pretty cool. I, uh, if, that's a, if that's a pie, I want a slice of that too. I'm hungry tonight. I want some stuff. Give me some food. Because I need recovery in my life. And so when I'm looking at scripture and I start to see these things, I have to mentally turn myself off for a minute because I'm the checkbox guy. I'm the guy that will take a look at my app and be like, oh my gosh, how many days did I miss? I'm just going to read through it real quick. That's not the point of scripture. I want you guys to know, when I'm up here um, preaching, that's kind of what I'm doing, I'm preaching. When I'm up here preaching, <laughs> when I'm up here giving the word of God and sharing the tools of recovery, I'm not only talking from this point out, I'm also talking from this point inside. Because God talks to me when I write. And it's not like, hey, you, better, you know that person's story, that person better be there tonight because, man. No, he's like, dude, you got some stuff you got to deal with, and hopefully some other people are going to benefit too. And so <laughs> um, we're, we're looking at Scripture, and it says, so that. That's answering why. We may be healed. And I have a story in my life. Um, since I've been married, so not very long ago, just a couple years, um, me and my wife, we were um, talking a lot because we live together and we're married. And so we have to talk a lot. <laughs> and so it's, it's kind of a revelation for me. I didn't realize that when I got married. I love you, babe. Um, and, so, <laughs> and so we're talking all, the, all this time. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm getting frustrated when I'm talking. I'm getting frustrated. And she's getting frustrated when I'm talking. And that, sometimes that still happens, but we'll worry about that later. Um, and she's getting frustrated when she's talking to me. And all of a sudden, we're finding ourselves in this tension where every time we are communicating together, which is often, we find ourselves in this crazy tension. And we recognize that this isn't something that should be happening. And I know a lot of people say in America, you know, or wherever, you know, people that are married, well, you know, my ball and chain. And I'm like, no, no, no. This is my wife. I want to be with her and I want to communicate and I want to make sure that we're having a healthy, successful marriage. I should not be frustrated every time I'm trying to relay a point to her. And so we decided that this isn't the way things are supposed to be, but this is the way that things are. We have to go get some help. And so we went to a marriage counselor. We went and we saw somebody. We swallowed our pride and we said, listen, every time we're talking to each other, where it seems like we're missing each other, and I continue to get, I continue to get frustrated. And with my frustration, I get mad. With my madness, all of a sudden, I revert back. I become cold. I become distant to the person I'm supposed to be the most intimate to. And I recognize this isn't right. So please help us. What are we supposed to do? And so he brought us through this really um, interesting way of talking. And it was inside of this book. It was called A Lasting Marriage. And it was just, or A Lasting Promise. And it was just this goofy way that I never in a million years would ever think that I would ever have to talk to anybody ever. Because it just doesn't make sense. It was like I was a robot all of a sudden trying to communicate something that should just be so simple. <laughs> Why do I have to do this? Just get it. But instead, he said, that's the point. You have to be intentional. Slow down. The things that are coming natural to you are pain, frustration, anger, resentment, distance. But if you become intentional, she'll understand what you're talking about. He will understand what's going on. You guys will be able to communicate on a better level. You will become warm. Your relationship will thrive again. All of a sudden, that person that you thought just didn't like or appreciate anything or care about anything that you wanted is going to start responding in the ways that you need them to respond because they will understand your expectations because you will have slowed down. You will have been intentional. And that's what I want to take a look at when we look at James 5.16, I can recognize that when me and my wife went to that counseling, we were there for 
many reasons. We found ourselves with all of these reasons behind us. We recognize that the past is not the way that it should be. The present is not the way that it should be. But the future we're hoping is going to look better and different. We were there for a reason. And so he said, talk, communi- talk with intention. Repeat what they say right after they say it. Don't just go into your point. So that your relationship can be at peace. You can find your partner loving and responding to you the way that you need to. There was a so that, there was a why. If I just went there because I had problems and nothing was going to be promised to be done about it, I wouldn't have gone. And so I can look around this room. I would imagine you watching online are here for a reason. I can look out into this room and see that there's some of my friends that are here and I can wonder, what, they, what are they there for? There's reasons. We're going to tell you to do steps. We're going to tell you to dig through your past. We're going to tell you to be intentional. We're going to tell you to open up to people that you probably never thought you would talk to. We're going to tell you all these things according to what the 12 steps have taught us so that your future may be better and different. There's a why to the things that we're doing. The point of reading scripture is not just to read scripture. The point of doing the steps is not just to say that we've done the steps. The point of going to a step study is not to say, I checked that box, recovery doesn't work. And so I want to ask you, what is your there for? There's reasons that a lot of people might know that you've talked to in these rooms. But you have to be open and honest with yourself. That piece that we read from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous immediately started with, we pocket our pride. We pocket our pride. If we pocket our pride, we're picking up humility. If we pocket our pride, we're not going to look for it somewhere else. We know where it's at. It's in a place that we're not supposed to be using it, and we know what we should be using. We should be using humility. Ask yourself an answer to yourself. What is your there for? But don't stop there, right? That's not what the point of the story was. It wasn't to say that we all have problems and we're just here talking about our problems. No, we have experience, strength, and hope inside of these rooms. And so we all have a so that. We all have a reason why we're here. We have reasons, but we also have a why. We have the reason that I hope my future looks different. I hope my relationship with my spouse is different. I hope I don't have to pick up tomorrow morning. I hope that if I go on the computer, I will not engage with those sites. I hope that if I go to Publix, I will not dwell inside the bakery and just look at all the cookies and just end up buying them all. That's me right here. And so (laughs) we have a so that. And you have to be real and honest with your so that. You have to recognize that your so that should be big enough for you to actually aim for it. It shouldn't be just something that I can grab. It should be something big. For me, when I first came into these rooms, something huge was me not having to use the next day. I woke up every morning searching for that piece, and I knew my dealer had it. I knew the bartender had that piece that I was looking for. I just needed one more hit, please, and then I'll have the strength so that I can be different later. But the same means will not produce different results. The same strategy will not produce different results. We have to be intentional. That was something that I learned inside of that counseling room. I continued to speak that same thing over and over, and she never got it. I was like, why not? Because I feel like I'm being so clear. But I had to be intentional with my words. I had to change the game plan. I had to stop doing what was just natural. And what's interesting about it is that it'll still work. Only if I work it, though. (laughs) So that's a big if, right? If I work it, it will work. And so it works when you work it. 
We've heard it said before, it's one of those things that we're not always excited to hear about. It's those catchy phrases that we have inside the commu- uh, recovery rooms. It works when you work it. Look to your neighbor and tell them, it works when you work it. <laughs> Say it again. Say it like you believe it. It works when you work it. If you're at home, type it in the chat. Do something about it, you know. Uh, speak it to the screen. I don't know what you say. Um, <laughs> So, I don't know what I'm saying. So, um, does anybody like to swim? Anybody like to swim? I love swimming. Does anybody like to play in a band? I know some of y'all better. <laughs> That's right. How about um, play on team sports? Anybody like to play on team sports? Anybody like to participate inside of a family? All right. So, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bring you back to the first question about swimming. Um, There's a guy that I know that told me he didn't like to swim. Okay, interesting. What what about it? He said, "Well, I don't like I don't like the way uh, it feels. You know, I don't like it." I'm like, "All right." Um, I kind of ask a lot of questions as part of my profession. I just do it. Um, If you come to me, be prepared to answer questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them. And so um, this person is telling me he doesn't like to swim, and I'm like, "What for?" And he says, well, I just don't, I don't know, it just feels weird. And I'm like, all right, is it like the buoyancy? And he's like, no, 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 I don't swim. Hold on. <laughs> Hold, let me backtrack a minute. You're telling me you don't like to swim, but you don't swim. Correct. All right. Why don't you like to swim? Why don't you swim? Well, because I don't like it. <laughs> like, okay, I'm not getting through to you, guy. All right. Why don't you like to swim? I just don't like the way it feels. I'm like, but you've never swam? Correct. I'm like, all right, so you've been in a pool, right? Correct. Have you been in the ocean? Yes. All right. Have you ever floated in the ocean? You ever swam playing with a kid, playing with your friend? You ever got to dive underneath the water and look at all the cool fish in the reef? You ever got to feel the movement of a swell just lifting you up and bringing you back down while never leaving a surface? You ever got to feel the adrenaline of having swam so much inside the ocean that you're like, I don't even know where my stuff is right now, (laughs) right? He said, no, I've never done that. I'm like, then don't tell me you like to swim. You don't like to swim because you've never done it. That's the deal with recovery. Don't tell me you don't like recovery or recovery doesn't work if you've never worked the steps. If you've never picked up the phone when you feel like using and you're like, Curtis, I keep on relapsing. I'm like, well, did you call somebody? No. Did you go to a meeting? No. Did you talk to your sponsor? No. No. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, it's not going to (laughs) work. You didn't swim, bud. (laughs) You didn't swim. It's the same concept with a band. I've I've heard about it. I don't know how to play any instrument, but I've heard things said that there's this moment inside when you're playing in a band that you just click. And all of a sudden, you just know that everybody's in tune. Everybody's on the same beat. Everybody's playing their note exactly the way they should be, and it just clicks. Feels right. Talking on sports, sports have chemistry. They talk about this person having being a great athlete. Well, is he worth coming? Will he work with our team's chemistry? I don't know. The idea is that here you always get to be in chemistry because you recognize you recognize that we're not perfect and we're not supposed to be. All right, so how do I work it? Let's take a look at step five. It says, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And so how do I work it? You know, first we have to humble ourselves. It talks about that initially. It says we pocket our pride. Just put it away. I'm not dealing with myself anymore. Because I know that my pride is going to try to keep me from being able to do what I want done. 
ourselves and pocket our pride. We accept reality of this specific circumstance or situation. Number two, we pray. Admit it to God. That's the type of prayer I want you to know. Confession, everybody, is a type of prayer that you are allowed to do. Confess. Tell God what it's like. Tell him. He's able to handle it. He's a big boy. He's got his big boy pants on today, I promise. He is able to take care of it. And he will not be offended if you don't show up to him and like, Lord, who art in the clouds, my soul dwelleth so dark. And I need your staff and your rod because I need your whatever they say. (laughs) No, just tell him like it is. He can handle it. I promise he can handle it. Tell him, I don't understand why I'm like this. Tell him, I don't get it. Why do they continue to go back and do the things that I just wish they would never do? Tell him, God, things aren't the way that they should be. Things haven't been the way that they should have been. But, Lord, I just want things to be different in my future. Please, God, confess. He can handle it. Own your confession. It's so easy to convince yourself. It's so easy to convince yourself otherwise. Own it. Own your confession. Not like, yeah, I did this one thing the one time and I just kind of made a mistake. No, own it. I am a sinner. I am a person who is not perfect, who is in need of the grace of Jesus Christ. I need the support of my recovery people. Can I get an amen in here? Come on. Let's go. I need it. I need it so bad. Convince yourself. Own it. Own your circumstance, own your situation, own the reality that you are currently not the person that you are meant to be. We shoved our pride in our pocket. Call someone and don't wait. The longer we hold on to these burdens and sins, the longer we have to be convinced otherwise about what we just spoke. Think about it, we're only as sick as our secrets, right? It is in these moments that we can become frozen. Or it seems like our phone weighs 4,000 pounds. Let me just pick it up and call my sponsor. Let me just call somebody. I already know what they're going to say. I don't need to call. That's that's the thing that I told myself 4 billion times. I already know what they're going to say. Don't use. Done. (laughs) Yeah, just don't pick up. Go to a meeting. You know. No, what's, what's crazy is that so often I've picked up the phone and I've made the phone call. I've told this person at the other end of the phone, hey, I have these insecurities right now. I feel like using. I feel like watching some porn. I feel like doing something that I know I shouldn't be doing. I know that if I do this in the present, my future will look messed up. Instead of, hey, just don't use, and then the phone clicks because I know that's what is going to happen in my head. Instead of, hey, just don't pick up, go to a meeting, we'll see you later. No, it's, oh my gosh, I've been feeling that way today too. What? How long has this been going on, Kurt? Hey, let's, I'll I'll meet you. Where do you want to meet? I remember telling myself stories. Hey, they're not going to pick up anyways. It's 2 in the morning right now. I don't know why I looked at the hand that doesn't have a watch. You know, it's 2 in the morning right now. What's going on? No, they're not going to pick up. They have kids. He's too busy. He's in school. He's doing stuff. He doesn't have time. I'm not that important. My problem's self-explanatory. I shouldn't be doing this anyways. All of the reasons I know that if I just call the person at 2 in the morning, they're going to pick up and tell me all the things that I already know that they're going to tell me, so I might as well just not pick pick up the phone. I already know what they're going to say. The wisdom has been received. Thank you for the person that I thought about calling. No. All of a sudden, we convince ourselves. If we convince ourselves not to call, it's so much easier to convince ourselves that our problem isn't real. We don't believe anybody. My sponsor told us so many times, we don't believe anybody as much as we believe ourselves. If we can convince ourselves not to work a program of recovery, we can convince ourselves to relapse. 
If we can convince ourselves not to call somebody, we can convince ourselves to call that person we know we shouldn't be calling. Hey, is your wife asleep? Is your husband home? You want to meet me at the bar? Do you have any? I'm feeling I need some right now. All of a sudden, we can convince ourselves of things that we know we should never do in a million years. So call somebody. Don't wait. Receive the love. This is like a really hard part. It sounds like very corny and like, just receive the love, man. Like, no big deal, dude. No, receive the love. (laughs) This is a very real thing. Do it. Receive it. I'm going to pick up the phone, and if I don't, I'm going to text you telling you that I'm busy or that I just need to talk through text. I, I... I want to give you grace. I want to show you mercy. I want to encourage you in your time of weakness. Receive the love back from me. Receive it. Because if we've convinced ourselves not to call, we can't receive it. So we don't have the opportunity to let love respond. But if we pick up the phone and the person is providing grace and encouragement to us, receive it. Don't start with the buts. Yeah, but. Yeah, but if you just understood, if you just understood the way this person has been driving me crazy, you would know that I need to go to the bar right now because I just need some relief. I don't want to drink or anything. I'm just going to play some pool. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to get some chicken wings. It's going to be good. You know, no, 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 no. That's not the deal, dude. The deal is you're calling me for a reason. Not because you're about to relapse, not because you're feeling horrible, not because of all of the reasons that you could be trying to convince yourself of. You're calling because you need some grace and you need some love. So just receive it. This is a real part of this process. Receive the love. And step five, you are going to be opening yourself up. You're going to be pouring yourself out like a drink. The person is going to be sitting there and they have the opportunity to respond. When they respond in kind, when they respond with grace, when they respond with truth, when they respond with love, receive it. Don't let your resentment convince you that you deserve otherwise because that's exactly what is going to be happening. If you start with the yeah buts, often it's connected to a resentment. Yeah, but she is so, yeah, but he just doesn't. Yeah, but my sponsor is. Resentment is attached at the end of the yeah but. And he's trying to control you. And in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous on page 64 it says, relapse is the number one offender. Like I said, I understand everybody in here is not an alcoholic. But that doesn't mean this is not pertinent to you. Relapse is the number, or um, resentment is the number one offender. When I think about an offender, I think about somebody who has committed a crime against somebody else. You have the defense and then you have the offender. The offender has done something to the defense. And so if we can see inside of that logic that resentment is the number one offender, that means resentment is the number one cause for us to be um, moving against ourselves. Resentment is the number one opponent that we have that does not want us to have our future the way that it should be, which is our so that. Our so that is telling us that we understand that where we're at now is not the way that things should be, but we want our future to look different and better. Resentment wants you to stay here. It will offend you in your recovery over and over again. It will attach itself to all of the different excuses in the world. I have too much homework. My wife doesn't get me. I'm staying up too late. My sponsor doesn't care. I know what my accountability is going to say. They're just as far in it as I am. Resentment is going to be the number one offender, not against recovery in general, but against you, against your recovery, against your future, against the way that you know things are supposed to be. Resentment's going to try to convince you. Don't let it. And so, accept the love by embracing the grace shown to you through this process. Because grace, like I said before, is not something that just enables us. Grace actually turns into strength. I had grace shown to me from God. 
It happened with my brain. I know y'all are saying, well, you said some goofy stuff. I don't know about it. But no, I actually have the ability to think and write a paper and pass a class. I've failed out of college twice. Two different states. There's no reason that I should be in school right now. There's no reason that I should have the opportunity to enter back into something that before my resentment would tell me that I know you're going to fail, don't even do it. But I have grace shown to me, and I accepted it through people just like you who gave me encouragement. Because that grace turned into encouragement, turned into strength. That strength turned into confidence. And that confidence said, I'm going to go to Palm Beach State College and I'm going to sign up for some classes that I probably know I don't need to take. But I'm going to go through the process. And next Monday, I get to graduate. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm the guy who died on the side of the streets of Colorado Springs and went to prison three days later. I was shown grace. It wasn't enabling me. It wasn't enabling my addiction. It was giving me strength to move forward so that I can find the reason, the so that, to move forward into something that I thought was never attainable. I had something that was so far off in the distance that it didn't even make sense. I told somebody on the phone today, yeah, I'll graduate in a week. He's like, what? (laughs) You're the addict and alcoholic, right? You're the guy who didn't believe in Jesus six years ago. How does grace fit into any of this? We find it in the therefore and the so that. And so, having said this, I want to get to our last side. It works because you work it. And work it because you're worth it. And we're going to have some fun. Tell the neighbor next to you, work it because you're worth it. No, say it again. Work it because you're worth it. Work it because you're worth it. That's right. Woo. Type it in the chat if you're at home. Say it to the screen. I don't know what you're doing. But do something because work it because you're worth it. The idea is that we're going to go through some stuff together. The idea is that we don't have to dwell in our hardships anymore. The idea is that we come together with community because we understand that we have a so that that is so far off into the distance that we don't ever have to worry about anything ever again because we have each other. We don't have to face life by ourselves. We have each other in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's what we are. We are the ecclesia. We are the people called out of the world so that we can be a mission light for everybody else in the world. We are creating this place to be attractive. And it's not because of the band, which is awesome. I love you guys. It's it's not because of the preacher. It's not because any of that. It's because that we have success stories that we celebrate every single month. The way that God works in our life. We can attach a therefore and a so that every single time. Thank you for letting me share. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. God, thank you for coming into this room and meeting us where we're at so that we can move into the place that you have prepared for us. God, we love you and we thank you. We're going to go get some experience, strength, and hope right now. Be with us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo. <laughs> yeah. so, so now I'm going to tell you all about some other stuff. <laughs> Everybody, man, I went way over on time. Here's the deal. We have um, an opportunity to continue in worship with tithes and offerings. I spoke about a way that you can track with um, notes throughout the message If you guys have the opportunity to give financially, that's a legit opportunity, and I ask for you to explore it. Pray about it, though. If you guys have that opportunity, there's going to be some people in the back as you leave. We ask that you can give in person in cash, or you can give online. You can text the number on the screen, 77977, or you can go to the app. Um, We really appreciate it. And then also we're going to be doing um, two groups for women tonight. 
my right, your left, is going to be women's open share and women's chemical dependency. And if um, that ends up being a little bit short, then we're going to merge into one big open share, in which case if you are chemical dependent, you still have a spot, we still have a seat for you. Um, men's open share and men's chemical dependency is going to be on my left, your right. And thank you guys so, so much for letting me share. We'll see you. in a million different places and trust me